about 3,000 years ago, ancient yogis achieved mastery over reality itself. Their teachings are recorded in one of the most profound texts on yoga, traditionally known as the Yoga Sutras. This ancient work, attributed to Patanjali, describes the concept of siddhis, extraordinary abilities that can be unlocked through advanced yogic practices. These powers are believed to arise from specific yogic techniques, intense concentration, meditation, and the purification of the mind and body. In Chapter 3 of the Yoga Sutras, Patanjali describes various mystical powers, including clairvoyance, telepathy, and levitation. He also mentions the ability to manipulate the elements, understand the speech of all creatures, recall previous births, become invisible, and gain knowledge of different realms of the universe. Siddhis are often seen as natural byproducts of reaching advanced states of consciousness through dedicated practice, rather than the primary goal. In fact, attachment to Siddhis can even become a distraction on the path to spiritual evolution. While these superpowers are not the main objective of spiritual practice, but rather side effects, they reveal that reality is much more expansive than we think, far beyond what we have been taught. Reality is far more flexible than most of us realize. It's not a fixed, rigid structure, but something incredibly malleable. A fluid field where everything begins with our intention and the focused direction of our energy or consciousness. The boundaries we have been taught to accept aren't as solid as they seem. In fact, they shift and change based on our focus and awareness. In this video, we will explore this profound nature of reality and uncover the potential that lies beyond the surface of what we have been told is possible. By the end, I will guide you through a short practice, a simple three-step method inspired by Patanjali's ancient teachings to help you channel your energy and begin experiencing this deeper reality for yourself. Stay with us and discover how to unlock a reality that is far more fluid and responsive to your intentions than you ever thought possible. Let's begin. There is a continuous space of energy, and the common human can only perceive a part of it. The result of this process is what everyone understands as reality. In this statement, Jacobo Grinberg, a Mexican neurophysicist and psychologist, sought to give voice to concepts such as reality, psychic powers, shamanism, and consciousness. He was able to demonstrate under the framework of science that human beings possess great psychic abilities, limited only by our own understanding of reality. Grinberg manifested these abilities by altering his concept of what is possible. Jacobo Grinberg's synergistic theory aimed to explain how consciousness interacts with reality. He argued that the brain doesn't simply perceive an objective reality, but constructs it through a synthesis of information from both the external world and inner consciousness. Grinberg believed that this interaction creates a shared matrix of reality, where perception and consciousness actively shape what we experience, with all beings interconnected within this matrix, contributing to a collective field of consciousness. He referred to this as the lattice of consciousness, attributing to it a pre-space, non-local nature. In interaction with the human brain, this lattice generates our particular reality. This lattice is not just what connects us all. It is the basis of all that exists. Grinberg saw it as an energetic field connecting all living beings, operating beyond time and space. He highlighted how our perceptions actively shape our reality, showing that what we perceive as limitations are self-imposed boundaries created by our mind. For Grinberg, abilities like telepathy, remote viewing, influencing matter with thought, or healing were not supernatural, but dormant capacities of the human mind, natural extensions of consciousness often suppressed by rigid concepts of reality. By expanding our understanding of consciousness, he believed we could break through mental barriers, interact more directly and deliberately with this energy field, and unlock the latent abilities and deeper potential within us. However, 
Just as Jacobo Grinberg was about to reveal his most groundbreaking discoveries about the nature of consciousness and reality, he mysteriously disappeared in 1994. His unexplained vanishing has left a lingering mystery, with his research pointing to a profound understanding of reality that continues to challenge both scientific and spiritual perspectives today. Let me illustrate this with an analogy. Imagine watching a movie in a theater. On the screen, you see various characters and objects. They may appear separate, but they are all made of the same light coming from the projector. At your very core, you are that light. As this light you remain untouched by what appears on the screen. But without this light the projection wouldn't be possible. Our brains filter reality, creating the illusion of a limited separate self in a world of impermanent forms. However, our true nature is expansive. We are the infinite light, and there is only one source. Interestingly, Andy Petro reached similar conclusions through a very different experience during his near-death encounter in 1955. He came to understand that the reality we perceive on Earth is an illusion, a story we live rather than the ultimate truth. He realized that we are much more than our stories, and reality is far more expansive than we can imagine. We are far more than we perceive ourselves to be, and our true potential far exceeds our current understanding. Andy Petro's near-death experience occurred in 1955, just before his high school graduation. While swimming with friends, he suffered severe cramps and began drowning in a lake. As he sank deeper and struggled underwater, a voice urged him to relax and let go. And when he did, everything changed. He felt himself exit his body and enter a tunnel, moving toward an incredibly bright, powerful light. But what happened next blew his mind. He found himself in a space beyond physical density, beyond time and space. In this timeless realm, as he describes it, he could hear the light speaking and could communicate with it. Not through his mouth, because he no longer had one, but in what he called a moment of no time. I didn't have eyes or ears, yet I could still see, hear, and communicate in ways beyond physical senses. As he relates, suddenly, he was drawn before the light, which radiated warmth and love. Behind it he could see billions of other lights, just like him, welcoming him home. He felt a deep sense of joy and belonging. He was back home again. Then, he became one with the light, absorbed into it. What happened next was beyond anything he could have imagined. He became the light, and in that moment, he felt as if he was everywhere. He was ecstatic, not greater or less than the light itself, just a part of its vast wholeness. And as he became one with it, as he was everywhere and everything, he suddenly knew everything. He understood everything about existence, knowledge that is beyond the grasp of our limited earthly minds, nearly impossible to put into words. He knew everything, absolutely everything. It wasn't limited to what he had learned in his individual life, or even in past lives. In experiencing the oneness and connection with the entire light, he grasped the entirety of existence. There was no question he could not answer. It was pure, unconditional love that enveloped him, absorbing him completely. In that state, there were no opposites, no highs or lows, no fat or thin, no day or night. There was no judgment, no opinions, nothing to limit the infinite everything. He came to understand that everything on the planet is an illusion, not the true and ultimate reality, as we often believe and have been taught. Our lives are narratives, stories that form part of something much larger. True reality exists beyond the physical world. Being on Earth is like performing in a Broadway play, with eight billion actors each playing their part. Yet none of this reflects the real essence of existence. In an instant, he realized that our world isn't real. It's more like a hologram. The true reality was in that light, where everything made sense, where all the answers existed. In the light, he felt a deep sense of oneness, complete peace, and unconditional love. 
There was no time, no separation, no boundaries, just pure existence. The light wasn't just a place, it was home, the ultimate source of all that is. Andy didn't want to leave, but the light told him it wasn't his time, and in the blink of an eye, he was back on the beach, gasping for air. He returned with a profound understanding and the unforgettable experience of truly living in the eternal embrace of this divine presence. Andy did everything he could to understand his experience. It wasn't until he read Dr. Raymond Moody's book, Life After Life, that he realized what he had experienced. It took him nearly 30 years to identify his near-death experience, a term that didn't even exist when it occurred. For almost 40 years, he kept it to himself before finally beginning to share his story. In his two books, Remembering the Light and Alive in the Light, Andy Petro recounts his near-death experience, sharing memories of drowning, entering the light, and returning to life on Earth. Why do I suddenly understand all this? I wanted to know. Who's giving me this information? Is it God? Krishna? Buddha? Jesus. Then, I was overwhelmed by the realization that God isn't a being, but a state of being. And I was now in that state of being. These profound words were spoken by Anita Morjani after her life-transforming near-death experience. Since then, she has dedicated herself to revealing the mysteries of life, death, and the unseen realms that lie beyond our physical existence. Anita Morjani's near-death experience in 2006 forever altered her understanding of reality. After a four-year battle with terminal cancer, her body had reached the final stages, and she slipped into a coma. It was during this moment, on the edge of death, that Anita experienced something extraordinary. In her near-death experience, she felt her consciousness expand far beyond the limits of her physical body. Free from pain and fear, she entered a state of pure awareness, where time, space, and matter no longer existed. Anita described being surrounded by an overwhelming sense of joy, unconditional love, and peace. It was as if she had awakened from a bad dream, finally realizing her true magnificence. In this expansive state, she experienced love like never before, pure and undiscriminating needing no proof of worthiness. She saw her body from above, observing the frantic efforts of doctors and the sorrow of her family. Yet her perception expanded beyond the physical world. She connected with higher dimensions of existence, where she met beings of light, including her deceased father. In this realm, Anita realized that her illness was rooted in the fear and self-denial she had carried throughout her life. She saw clearly how her lack of self-love had created blockages in her energy, ultimately leading to cancer. She understood that her illness was not a punishment or a result of negative karma, but rather a manifestation of her fears and a reflection of her immense power, the culmination of all her life's choices and thoughts. Most remarkably, she realized that she had the power to heal herself, not through external treatments, but by fully opening herself to the boundless love she was experiencing. She learned that the true nature of reality is not the material world, but the infinite interconnected energy of love that underlies everything. Anita was given the choice to remain in this state or return to her body. Knowing that her life's purpose was not yet fulfilled, she chose to return, bringing with her a deep understanding of how fear distorts our reality and how love can transform it. Upon awakening, doctors were astonished to see her body rapidly heal. Within weeks, her tumors had disappeared, defying medical explanation. Anita's near-death experience taught her that the reality we experience is far more expansive than we realize. The true essence of life is rooted in love, and when we free ourselves from what limits our true self and embrace our divine nature, anything is possible. Her experience challenges conventional notions of life and death, 
showing that reality is not what we have been taught. It is far deeper, more fluid, and connected than we can imagine. Anita Morjani's story and her best-selling book, Dying to Be Me, help us realize that our fears often make us feel more dead than alive in the present moment. These fears can paralyze us, preventing us from fully experiencing life. However, it is during our lives that we have the opportunity to awaken to our full potential through true, unconditional love for ourselves. All the exciting concepts and stories presented in this video demonstrate that our understanding of reality and our true nature extends far beyond what we know and have been taught. They illustrate the immense potential within each of us to raise our consciousness and awaken to our authentic selves, an opportunity that is central to our purpose in this lifetime. Patanjali's three-step technique, as described in Jacobo Grinberg's book Meditation, guides us to move beyond our physical senses and access pure consciousness. This consciousness is the essence of God, whole, complete, and indestructible. The Samyama practice consists of three steps that can be applied to any object of meditation, with concentration on a specific object as the focal point. It involves focusing and directing the mind, energy, and awareness in highly refined ways, potentially awakening latent potentials within oneself. Patanjali suggests starting with objects of high density, progressively moving toward more subtle ones, until the final object is Purusha, or the self. However, he warns that becoming attached to or overly fascinated with these powers can hinder one's spiritual progress. Samyama is the simultaneous practice of concentration, meditation, and union. The three steps of Samyama are 1. Focusing on an object, directing focus and attention to a chosen object. 2. Sustained observation, maintaining observation until the object fully occupies the entire field of consciousness, excluding all others. 3. Fusion with the object, merging with the object, where it ceases to be separate and reveals its true essence. Start by selecting a tangible object, like a flower, and focus all your attention on it. Observe the flower closely, taking in even the smallest details. Keep your focus until the flower fills your entire consciousness. Eventually, you will merge with the flower, becoming one with it, and in that unity, you will understand its deeper meaning. You can choose any object, a flower, a color, a point on the wall, or something more abstract, like an emotion, or even the soul. Begin with something tangible, and as your practice deepens, you can move toward more abstract concepts, such as space, and eventually focus on the self, achieving a deep unity with the object of your meditation. Fix your attention on that object, maintain your observation until it occupies your whole awareness, and then go deeper. Let it cease to be just an object, and feel it merge with your consciousness. As you observe, let go of all labels and names. If you are focusing on a flower, don't think of it as a flower anymore. Just let it be what it is. Simply observe without judgment or labels, and keep your attention on it until it completely fills your awareness. As you do this, you might begin to feel a sense of strangeness, or something unfamiliar arising. This is part of the process. Stay with it. In time, the true nature of the object will be revealed to you. The Samyama method is a technique for gaining direct knowledge, as it allows the practitioner to understand the essence or inner nature of the object they are observing. Samyama can be used to attain direct knowledge of any living being, entity, or object chosen for observation. When the practitioner focuses on Purusha, the eternal spirit or soul, they apply the three steps of Samyama in meditation on the self, the pure self, or their true identity. Through this exercise, they gain direct knowledge of their own essence. The fusion between the observer and the object of observation dissolves the separation between external and internal, 
subject and object, or self and other, leading to a state of unity. According to Patanjali, achieving silence is essential for the union of the individual self with the unified self in totality. The union of the individual soul with the universal soul. For this union to happen, it is necessary to still the fluctuations of the mind until they are silenced. The mind, as a part of perceiving reality, distorts it when it is not silent. When memory is active and conditioned, thinking confuses reality with a personal interpretation of it. In other words, mental activity, according to Patanjali, is like a filter or obstructing screen that colors reality with its own texture and tone. Only when these filters disappear does a union occur, where reality can perceive itself. I hope this information helps you, and always remember, you hold immense power within, far beyond the physical world. You are here to awaken to it. Thank you for listening.